Praise the Lord, everyone. My name is Mario. I am an Apostolic Pentecostal. And if you're visiting my channel for the first time, welcome. You have made it just in time for today's Apostolic Reaction video. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing John Cooper. Now, if you don't know who John Cooper is, he's the lead singer, bass player for a very, very popular Christian band called Skillet. And he's going to be talking on the subject of evangelizing and of what evangelism looks like to him. But enough about that. Let's get straight into the video. But, 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 but hold up. Before we get to the video, let's play that cool, cool intro whip it. Let's go. Skillet's John Cooper Evangelism. Let's go. Amazing thing about Skillet, I think we do about 60% of our touring in the mainstream rock world and, and probably the, the remaining in uh, between Christian festivals or package tours like we toured with Third Day a few years ago, Toby Mac or uh, Winter Jam, things like that. And I love doing both because I, I have a real heart for evangelism. That's kind of like my thing. It's what gets me going um, and the reason. I okay, dude, it's really hard to take you serious when you're wearing like eyeliner and eye makeup. So just throwing that out there. I, that I love doing music so much. It's such a great platform to, to throw a lot of uh, seed to keep uh, you know, Jesus uh, a parable kind of metaphor going. Throwing seed everywhere, everywhere you go uh, for somebody like Skillet, which is really cool. Yes and no, okay? Yes, music is a wonderful platform, okay? But to glorify and honor Him. One of the things I'm probably most proud about is the fact that my kids now are old enough that, that my kids get to share their faith in Christ with the other bands that we tour with. And it's always really cool because, you know, they're kids, so they, they don't have anything telling them that maybe they shouldn't do it. Or they, sh they just are who they are, and people want to listen to, to their stories. So I think that's really cool. Along with the fact that, you know, there's been a, several kind of prominent um, uh, secular rock artists that have gotten saved, you know, since we've toured. All right, what does that mean to be saved? Okay, is that a, is that a prayer? Is it, is it a prayer? that we say in our hearts that we've accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, and, and that's how we're saved? Or what's the biblical way to be saved? Jesus talks about this. He says, he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. So I hope when he's talking about this, that he's talking about the biblical way to be saved. That it doesn't come through a prayer. It does not come through John 3.16 which says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. We have to always look. When you're reading the Bible, first of all, who was the audience Jesus was speaking to? Or whether it be Paul or any of the other disciples, who were they speaking to? What was their level of maturity? But Jesus did say, very clearly, okay, that he who believes and is baptized shall be saved. So yes, you have to believe, but you also have to do what? Be baptized. Passion of mine that Christians should be, whatever job you have, whatever school you go to, we should be mingling and have good friends that are not saved. Uh, and and I, of course, I know as a parent, I don't want my kids only hanging out with unsaved people. I don't want my kids getting wrongly influenced, but I want my kids through the work of the Holy Spirit in their lives, I want them to influence their friends and love them the way they are, even if their friends never come. All right, I don't agree with him at all on this point. I'll tell you why, okay? Uh, as someone who was in a position like that coming out of high school, I was 18, about to start uh, University of Tennessee, uh, my idea of evangelizing was, hey, you know what? I'm on fire for Christ. Let's just go to where all the unsaved people are. Let's go to the club. Let's go, let's go to the bars. Let's go to the parties. Okay? And, and I'm going to be the light that shines into them. But what happens is, okay? Now, he, he mentioned that he says it's a good idea, you know, that, that we just mingle with everybody. And that's true. That's true with a very big asterisk. Okay? A very big asterisk. Because you don't want to go to the world's environment to try to reach the world. You want to bring the world to your environment. And where's our environment? Uh, home Bible studies, um, youth rallies, church services, midweek Bible study, 
uh, home cell groups, okay? That's our environment. That's where we should be bringing them to us, okay? Because if you think for one second, all right, any apostolic believer, any believer of Jesus Christ watching this video, if you believe for one second that you can go out into the world, okay, and there'll be 10 unsafe people, okay, 10 people not been baptized in Jesus' name, not received the gift of the Holy Ghost, or drinking and doing all these worldly things, and they may, they, they may not even be doing any of that stuff, okay? They may be pretty decent people, maybe just just hooked on, I don't know, something that's not of Jesus Christ. If you think you're going to go in their environment and win all 10 over, you are sadly, sadly mistaken. You must be very, 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 very careful on how you approach evangelizing people, okay? Bring them to your environment because if you go to theirs, I promise you over time, you will lose. You will conform to them and it's going to be much harder for you to get out, okay? And very few do get out. There's been some very life-defining moments for, for me. I, I think that, that my story is a little bit flipped back uh, uh, upside down. I was raised in a Christian family. I gave my life to Christ when I was five years old and I loved Jesus and I wanted to live for Jesus in, in my life. Did you get baptized in Jesus' name to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost? That's the only way you can be saved, okay, according to the Bible. For me, being a light to the world was always being forceful with the gospel with my words. And uh, so listen to my whole story before anybody judges anything, please. <laughs> yeah, let, yeah, let's hear that, please, Dude, please. About Christ, actually. I think it's a really beautiful thing. But I didn't realize that maybe... I needed to be forceful with my actions first. And That's a beautiful point. Okay, I do like that. All right. Your actions are more powerful than your words most of the time. Also, the way you look on the outside speaks a lot of how you reflect on the inside. Why do we say that? Because we want to be a reflection of Christ, okay? That we are covered up, that we are beautiful, that our body, our flesh, that we all fall temptation to with, with our eyes, when we, when especially men to women, we want to keep that for our significant other. Don't want to look like the world at all in any way, talk like them, because then we would be hypocrites, okay? How can we say we're Christ, who we're called to be separate of the world, if we look like the world, talk like the world, act like the world? It doesn't add up. So I think one of the biggest things that changed for me was, this was about 2001, I went to a youth rally in my city just as a youth worker. Skillet had already been playing. We were on our fourth record at the time. And all of our lyrics at the time were very Christian and very Jesus-oriented, which I was really proud of. And I went to this... Uh, this youth conference and there was like one of these youth video youth mime things they do and they did it to a Linkin Park song this is 1999 or 2000 and I remember thinking that's really weird they're not a Christian band why aren't they doing it to one of my songs and I was watching all these kids respond to the lyrics of this Linkin Park song that was a little bit of pride did you catch that why didn't do my song why didn't we do our song the song that glorified Jesus be, be careful about pride pride cometh before the fall and I suddenly realized, is Linkin Park writing more relevant music to Christian kids than I am? No, <laughs> they're not. I promise you that, okay? They're lyrics full of the world, not glorifying God in any single way, not glorifying Jesus, okay? They're not writing more relevant, okay? It's all relevant to the world and what the world wants to hear. And that is when Skillet began shifting our lyrics to writing about issues that I think that all kinds of people can relate to. Some Christian people felt that it was, uh, that you were watering down your lyrics. It wasn't Christian enough. And in some ways they were right. It, we were watered, we were, it wasn't we were watering it down, we were. No, <laughs> holy moly, I can't believe I'm hearing this. That's called watering down. Read any of the Psalms in the Bible, all right? It is all about glorifying Jesus. It's all about it. That's what music is for, to glorify him. Why would you switch to be situational? Not all who hear the message and the gospel of Jesus Christ will accept it. Don't change the message to reach more of the world because most of the world won't accept it anyways. No matter how broadened you get, no matter how situational you get, no matter how watered down you get, 
they will not get it whatsoever. So keep the message true according to the word. Preach and sing Jesus, Jesus. That has been one of the, the most powerful life lessons for me, um, it, which is uh, it's still evangelism. But we need to be a little bit smarter and a little bit more loving and gentle about how we get the evangelism. Message Notice how he didn't really say it confidently. It's still evangelism. I mean, come on, you know. Hmm. All right. Well, that that was tough to watch. But uh, hey, that's what we're doing. Again, we're doing apostolic reaction videos on other denominations, what they believe. So thank you all for watching. Uh, stay tuned for the next video. I'd love for you to comment down below on a skillet song that you want me to review as far as how do the lyrics work and glorifying God. Is this a song I should listen to? So comment down below. But thank you all for watching. My name is Brother Mario. God bless you. Hey, I hope you all enjoyed that. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. Definitely want to know what you all got out of it. But most importantly, share this message. Share it with your best friend. Put it on your Facebook. Slap it on your Instagram. Doesn't even matter. We're trying to get this message out. And hey, don't let your blessing streak in. Check out some of these other videos we got here. Hey, love you all so much. Gotta go. Bye-bye.